Hi, everybody. My name is Phyllis Y. Whitley. And if you have been spiritually victimized, traumatized, welcome to Spiritology Live, where I bring my number one Amazon book to life. Yes, each episode is a raw, spiritual, metaphysical, holistic space of consciousness. For self-healing, as you learn how to break your religious shackles so you can master and manifest your promised land within today. Let's go. Hi, everybody. By the time you get this podcast, I'm pretty sure it's going to be at least April. Okay. With that being said, I had some other podcasts before this that I really ask you to go back and look at every single one of them because it's a method to my madness, but I'm going to change that. It's a method to my goodness. With that being said, we talked about a lot of things in the past. I'm not even going to go there, but I know we we covered shepherd slaughtering. That was really good. I had my Whisper Vines team give me some topics because they when they give me topics, it's like I have to go step out of my box and then say, wait a minute, and go into their mind box and start doing a little bit of research. And then I have to come here and give it to you in a way that is going to help you, your spiritual growth, as well as feed your soul. Okay, feature spirit soul food. As I said, we all know that some of the episodes is is different. I speak prophetic view. With that said, we did time travel. We did one and we did two. We spoke about Back to the Future, Inception, Frequency, but there's much more time travel movies, and I love the romantic ones. Now, that's time travel. I think it's exciting. But I show you something more like the spiritual time travel. Yes, a lot of y'all will say, I don't get it. I don't like it. This don't sound spiritual. I understand why you have to go ahead and go to another podcast. Those who have been following me, you have to understand that the Things that I give you or see is from a prophetic view, ushered by my spiritual father. And some of it is entertaining, and some of it is you should take very serious. And I know a lot of y'all do because I get good feedback. And we are, for some reason, I went to part three. I explained how you can spiritually go back or go to the future. Whenever you are revising something on a spiritual level or a mental level, you are literally going to change your tomorrow because your tomorrow is really today. Well, Miss P, I don't get that. Okay, let me break it down to you. My whole concept of consultation and counseling is about revising Okay, revising your word. So we go into the spiritual aspect of your mindset, your mental mindset. We go and change things and you can change these things as you had already seen. Those of you who have seen the movies that I had mentioned, Back to the Future, Inception or Frequency, go and listen, order it online. I'm telling you and look at it from a different point of view. And when you look at it from a different point of view, you will start seeing how I look at stuff from a prophetic preview. Literally, when they went in the past, when they came to the today and proceeding in the future, everything was totally changed. Yes, you can do that. Yes, you can. And one of the things that you do, say you go back and, um, for instance, you had a, a dog bite you. It was in your past. Every time you get around today, you get around dogs. You say, oh my God, I can't take it. I'm not, you, you start, your whole body starts shaking. And what, what you're doing is you're reacting to something that happened in the past. If you go back and revise that, 
you literally are going back to the past because you can revise that in a sense where you look at what happened and probably understand the situation was depending upon the dog bite we you know we talking about something something that wasn't whack and it could be out of whack because that might have been a pacific dog that was trained to do what they do and to be vicious but if it's a dog that really was like scared or were you doing something you know sometimes they say don't pet it while they are eating you can look back at that go and relive that episode in your mind and you have to make sure that you got a good coach, counselor, mentor. And you can go back and look at that and change what happened. Change the fact that the the dog bit you and do it in a sense where the dog might have just like gave you a scratch or just licked your hand and to see yourself petting the dog. And then you come out of it. Excuse me for saying come out of it. You should feel different. Look at the dog pet the dog. When you slowly come out of that looking back, you'll say, I don't I really don't know what happened. But you you know I don't see how this is going to help me. It will because you might have to go back a couple times until you have a feeling of completeness, a feeling of, oh, it's all right. A feeling of a love for the animals, a love for the dogs you isolate that particular incident. So when you are approached in your current state by a dog or see a dog, you will feel less intimidated. You'll feel less scared. You you might even walk up to the dog and, and pet it. So do you see how by revising certain actions that happened back there, you literally it would change your feeling. It would change your thought, how you see the circumstances. It's just like somebody who really hurt you. If you look back at the circumstances, sometimes we just have to look at the circumstances and, and say, hey, wait a minute. What did I learn from this? This person came through my life for a reason to teach me something. That, for instance, if it was a man, some of us hang on to that grudge and current and in the future, we bring it to the to our life, excuse me, our current life to the present, and we say, I hate all men, or I hate all females if a man was hurt by a woman. You can actually go back, and if sometimes you can't just change the dream, you literally, that daydream you have, an imagination you have, you literally have to kind of, in some circumstances, look at everything and say, did this person, am I angry because this person was not my life mate? You literally have to see where, what was the universe, which is one, which is God, was was trying to show you. Did you have signs that God said, a lot of us bring blaming bad relationship on God. Did you have signs where God said, walk away? Did you have red flags where the person might have smacked you or cheated on you and you let them go? You have to go back sometime and look at the circumstances and say, hey, wait a minute. What did I learn from this? What can I learn from this to take it into my next relationship and make it healthy? You might can learn from that and say, oh, when I see these red flags, I'm gone. But you don't want to walk into a relationship, a newbie relationship, and blame that person, treat that person for what the other person did. So you can revise even the, the relationships, okay, with someone. When you look at stuff differently, you will find yourself more able to talk about it. I remember a client mentioned her um, ex name and didn't want to talk about it. Then it came to a point in counseling service, I had to really bring this person's name and I had to look at it and say, well, this person really didn't even have the qualifications that you wanted and the red flags was there. And when they really sat back and looked at that, and then I was like, this person did something beautiful for you. And it was like, what? And it was like, this per- this person gave you a beautiful child. But that's all they was there for. And unfortunately, it happens. But people come into your life and they're there temporarily because you're going to, you know, once you start 
going deeper, coming out of it, you might have manifested a baby or two or three or four or five. You should love and adore your children. And you can look at that man as, listen, you came here for one thing. You can look at that woman, you came here for one thing. So I can release you and let you go. Don't be angry that the relationship didn't make it through. You know why? Because people are here for a season, a reason, and a lifetime. And a lot of us are angry at God because it's like, I wanted this person for a lifetime. But is that what you needed? Hmm. Now, I'm going to speed up because I got to get to be prepared to get your passport ready. This is part three of the time travel, episode 49. And I'm going to tell you right now, everything that I just told you was a sneak peek of how I help you revise. Now, speaking of that relationship, when you see it differently and you start feeling differently and you have to have somebody guide you through, you will be surprised. And I have had testimonies where that person came back and they was able to talk about the person. They was able to cry about what happened and they was able to see that they had really miracle kids from this person, but they didn't need to be in a relationship with that person. That was not what they really needed. So do you see how when they came back to their present, they literally was able to speak about the person, say their person's name. They revised something. Yes, it was revised. Now, Miss P, what did I have to do with passport? I'm going to teach you how to get what you want in your dreams by going overseas. The relationship part we talked about, you can go overseas. You can travel. That's why I said get your passport because most likely that is going to be overseas. And what we're going to do, yes, we're going to take what we have. We're going to take some scriptures because a lot of y'all say, I don't believe that. And I'm going to finish this up. And I guarantee you at the end of this, you're going to say, hey, wait a minute. Hmm. Give me your testimonies. I will get testimonies of people getting ready to go overseas. And depending upon your conscious level, you may go on a trip. The trip you never thought or dreamed that you would do. First, let's go ahead and look at why those areas need to be revised. First of all, Mark 15, 27 said, With him, they crucified two thieves, the one on the right hand and the other on his left. This is the New King James Version. This was Jesus' days. When he was crucified, it was a man on the left, a man on the right. And anybody who knows their Bible literally understand what I'm talking about. One really was, they both were thieves, but thieves of what? Of your past and your future. How do you trigger your past? You trigger the past with old songs. Remember we were just talking about a relationship? And then you play those specific songs that, or it comes up on the radio, or you play it, and you say, oh my God, and you go back. Then you get angry. <laughs> Then it could be pictures. You go back to your scrapbook and you got one picture left because you, you tore up all the 50. Your memory. Sometimes you just sit back and you daydream. And sometimes when you, depending upon what mood you in, you literally go back. You may meet somebody new and you find yourself going back. And you got this war, defense war up, fussing with the person and you did this and you did that. I know I ain't do it. That's you stuck in the past. It could be your conversation. It could be one of your friends, both of y'all mutual friends. And remember so-and-so and so? You want to stay out of that until you know how to revise it. So what happens in the future? But first, going back in the past, if you stay in those modes, it will become a depression mode. This is why so many people entertain depression. They are looking at something that happened or they are they are so busy looking at the real view mirror. Think about that. If you're driving, you no way in the world that car could go forward. A lot of people are stuck in their life. Let me put a disclaimer in out here. I cannot cure. I am not a medical doctor. So moving forward, this is spiritual, biblical purposes only. Now. Let's get back. 
How do you know you in your past? You talk about your words are usually, I can't. I tried. I tried to go to school. I can't get into another relationship. You understand what I'm saying? I don't want to see a woman or a man. I don't want to see a woman no more. I don't want to see a man no more. Or but. I like him, but. I like her, but. You stuck. Well, where's the but? Oh, but I was hurt before. I don't want to get married again because my last marriage. Well, why? Because. Maybe I need to put because in it. Because the last one did me wrong. So those are some examples of the past. Now let's look at the future. A lot of people, the thief about the future. Your past can be robbed from you. Your future can be robbed too. How? Let's talk about some of the words. You stay like kind of like in a promised land. You know those people that procrastinate. You know, they say one day, I will. You tell them to do something. This can happen with your kids. You know, you're going to take out the garbage. I will. You understand what I'm saying? When you're going back to school, um, one day, if you are not entertaining school right now and you don't have a plan where you're going to say, I'm going back exactly three years, so and so and so, you're not going back. It ain't going to be in you. You have to do something, some type of study and seminars, something small study to get you up to that big study. Or if you specialize in something, because you don't have to go to school. You know how I say, Everybody's not college material, but you must specialize in something. So you you know those people. You know it could be somebody in your family that's always they have these big dreams. I have nothing against dreams, but they dream, but they don't put no action to it. It become a fairy tale. It become promises. Could you lend me a hundred dollars and listen? I promise you, you know those people. I promise you, I'm going to give this back. <laughs> And that's that I'm telling you, now that you understand that, this is what we need to do. Let's see first what God says. Matthew 6, 34. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. That's from HCSB. Hormon standard. Okay. Horm- um, Hormon Christian standard. Bible. With the reason why I'm bringing these up is because the biggest trigger of that, of the future, is you have no plan. So, what do you need to do? We need to go ahead and get your passport. We are going to discuss how to get prepared and get your passport. But the reason why everything I set up until now was said is because these two thieves come only to steal and kill and destroy. John 10.10 says, I have come that you may have life and you may have it abundantly. Hmm? Say that again. John 10, 10, a thief come only to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it more abundantly. This is because old religion, religious sac- sector seed, try to rip you, try to belittle you, try to make you feel guilty for having manifested your promised land. Yes, your promised land may have material good, but it's just candy that God is saying. Hey, listen, I'm going to give my daughter and and I'm going to give my sons candy. Would you treat your kids? Don't you want to be able to treat them? Now, this is after you have a relationship with him. And those of you who do, you will live abundantly. That's your goal. You cannot. Okay, let me stop because some people say, Miss P, Miss P, it's not all about that. No, it's not all about that. It's about you going out there and being fruitful and being productive. We'll talk about that in a future episode. Because you can't help nobody if you're not productive. How can you help 
somebody on the street and they just need a dollar or five dollars. And maybe you have a, a, a neighbor that, that say, oh, my goodness, I can't even I need help with one of my bills because her man left her or vice versa. You can't do anything unless you have. You have to be fruitful. Remember, although you get abundance is really for everybody else. Not that you're supposed to take all your money and give it to that family member and give it to that friend. No, you have to use and choose your money wisely. But you should you want to be in a position where you are not stuck in your past because every month you can't pay your how can you help? Well, Miss P, I want to help people. I want to go ahead and give to the um, dog, um, people who rescue dogs. I want to give to the people who are hungry overseas or even hungry over here when I get money. No, you need to prepare yourself, you notice, for your passport. Before God brought Esther to the king who had much. She had to go through a purification, sanctification for six months where she actually was living. Most of the women was like really coming from a lonely life. And that she had to live in, in the glory though of abundance. They was preparing her. She had to become a queen six months. You notice before the king was manifested. Now, what do you do? You have to prepare your travel. See yourself traveling. Go get Pacific pamphlets. You can go get it online. I tell you, this works. I have testimonies. I remember when I was going through an illness that was actually cure, thank God. I was going through a sickness and I literally was like so tired of what I went that went through that year. I said, I got to go. I got to get myself together. I got to bring my mind to a healthy conscious level so I only can see the doctor for maintenance and preventive care. And I said, doctor, I got to go. I'm going on vacation and whatever. And, I, and he said, go. Before I even went on that vacation, in my downtime, when I was ill, I literally went and got pamphlets. I had books. I seen the ship. I wanted to go on the cruise. I looked at it. I studied it. I looked at the cabin when I wanted to go to. And you could do that for a villa. I recently had somebody who was blessed to go to a villa. And I don't know that was on a vision board. But you literally have to prepare yourself. And... This is what I'm saying. You can do that. Imagination. Imagine you going and getting on a boat. Imagine, say, if you want to go over to, maybe you want to go to Alaska. See it. You can see it in your mind eye, or you can go, for those of you who need some help with that, you can go and get pamphlets on Alaska. You don't, it don't have to be a cruise. It can be just look at the Alaska air. You can get the plane uh, pamphlets on how, what, when do they leave in your area. You can do meditation. Once you got that information, you can just start seeing it. Look at certain pictures that they have. Like in Alaska, the people get off the boat, look what whale washing. See yourself doing there. See it, feel it, smell the ocean, smell the sea. You see what I'm doing here? Then some of y'all say, hey, wait a minute, I need to see this. Everybody is different. Some people are so visual, they need it. They need to see the pictures, cut out the pictures. And this is what people have, vision boards or whatever they have. And say, you have that, you have that. Then you say, well, Miss P, I don't even have my passport. You can go ahead and find a passport image and you can just sit back and cut that out. Or you could just imagine it. But once you do that, then you can look at the place that you desire one by one, depending upon um, how your job works. You know, you can go and say, hey, I know people who spend is off the summer and they just travel. And then some people like I got two weeks here. I'm going to go here. Or they want to go to another place. 
The first thing that you might want to do, I'm not trying to go outside of the United States, Miss, Miss P, with all the stuff going on. You don't have to. Technically, I'm going to tell you, if you are in the United States, you're not that far from the Caribbean islands. So you can start there. Or you can turn around and say, hey, I've never been out of my state. It is people that have never been out the state. It can be because that one thing, but I'm not taking a plane. It is, that's something that needs to be revised. And I understand. But at the same time, they have trains. I remember taking a, a plane to Chicago and taking the train over to Denver. Rough rider. But it was worth it. They have the bus. Last time I checked, you can actually go drive. And so you can see beautiful countries where you're at. And I don't care if you're overseas, go to other places that you've never been before. If you're in Asia, turn around and go to another part. You understand what I'm trying to say? I, I had a client of mine who went to Singapore and Thailand, and they said it was the most beautiful place. So really, you you can do that. You can be in Europe. I hear in Europe, they right next door to each other. You can take a train over here from from Paris to, and I don't even know if I'm saying it right because I haven't I haven't been there yet. That is on my my. That is something that I definitely want to go to. But I know the little places you can go over here. You can go to France. You can do this. A lot of places you can just take the take the train to. It is that yeah. It, it is that simple. And you can see yourself going to all of those different places. Some of you was like, you know, actually want to go to Africa. And some people live in Africa, but they haven't even went for, you know, to different places. So it is it is places that you could, Ghana, they never went over to the Nigeria. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? You can literally within your own providence or country or continent, you can go to different places. And that's what you want to prepare. Here, I showed you what to do. Take action. Taking action is um, using your imagination, using meditation, using a vision board. And you can also, you don't want to share this to everybody. Don't share this to everybody because if a person who never even traveled out that state, they're going to look at you like you're crazy. What do you want to go over there for? You understand? So unless you have someone who know how to take action in these areas that you can literally have a conversation with, about the place as if you are already there. You understand? These are preparation to set up you to travel abroad or where you at right there. You have to have preparation. Imagination, meditation, even a vision board, all of these are spiritual. Spiritual treatments or works that you are doing. It's not hocus pocus. Okay. We don't do that here, but it's literally taking action to prepare. So you won't be stuck in the past. So you won't say, well, I know somebody who traveled in a car, their brakes went out. I'm not going to go through that. Look at you, you stuck in the past or you look into the future. I think it's going to be some walls out there. I'm not moving and going nowhere. Okay, I understand that. You in the future. Okay? Live in the fairy tale. It's normally usually a war going some going on in each decades, each centuries. Your generation, your parent generation. So don't let that be an excuse. So what you want to do, you want to take action. I have a quote because I'm going to end this. You should know by now your time travel. You should understand how to go in your past. Stop making excuses and you want to stop going and fathering your future, procrastinating. You need to take action. Listen to my quote. If you stop producing fruit, then God will stop producing you. You must be fruitful. If you have to go on a job, travel through for job reasons. Just relax. Some people have to do that. And then, and you know, especially if you're an author, when you travel, you really will find yourself opening up to write that book. Some of y'all need to take your or your job, all the things that comes with it, leave it at the house, 
leave it at the office and take you a vacation. At the end of the day, it's self-love, but you must prepare for it. This is how you do it with all of those things. I said, take action. If you need more help, if you need a coach, a counselor, a mentor, you know how to get in contact with me. Okay, just go ahead and go to phyllisWhitley.com, my website, and hit contact. And also testimonies. I have had many testimonies. I'm not telling you something that I haven't done. Yes, I did go on that cruise. I did go on that cruise and it was fantastic. You hear me? And where did I go? I went to the Bahamas. Yes, I did. So with that being said, thank you for coming into my space. And what's new? Well, it's the beginning of the year. I'm doing some wonderful things with my taxes. I'm doing a lot of organization with my finances. And you know what I'm doing, basically? I'm preparing. I'm preparing myself so I can start traveling. Yes, so I can start traveling. Miss P, do you have your passport? Yes, I have my passport. How about you? Don't forget, I do have a new book out. It has been out, Wordology. Excellent, excellent book on how to stop letting those past words stop you from your future. Also, Ask Jalen. Excellent book for those who are young, all the way up into their teens. Yeah, in some some cases, adults need to look at it. Yes, because adults... There's a lot of adults that are walking from the triumph, the tragedies that they have, excuse me, back in the past of somebody bullying them. And, and adults get bullied too. With that being said, if loving yourself is wrong, you don't want to be 